wanted to talk about life as my wife and I see it with our father and how that's transformed our lives and why we probably sound peculiar to a lot of people because we realized we would sound peculiar to our old selves the people we used to be the way we used to see things we would have thought the things we are saying now are very strange and I was not someone who believed in this word of faith and prosperity business at least not the way it's stereotypically portrayed and taught where you see it more commonly but I did believe that if I could just generate enough faith I could make things happen and for what it's worth you believe me or not I wasn't thinking in terms of my own personal wealth but just that good things would happen I, I, I desired that I really wanted to have faith that wonderful amazing things would happen and in Mark 11 he makes a statement that is Jesus makes a statement to the effect of if you ask believing you already have it you'll have it and the thought I was having now is what did what did Adam and Eve have in the garden and is that what they had is that something that God wants to restore to us I would think it makes sense that he does want to restore that because that was his idea of perfection that was his idea of very good he created that and they had it they had not only the presence of their father they had the love and acceptance of their father perfectly he gave them no commands other than trust me just so you know that's how I interpret that command of don't eat from that tree it wasn't the detail of what tree and don't do it it was in essence saying trust me you know I love you you know I accept you I want you to live your life because I was listening to something this morning and it said something about how they, if they would have obeyed, they could have been servants of the master. There was nothing in there that said servants of the master. They were the son and daughter of their father. And like I say, I believe that's what he wants to restore to us. So I was just seeing the flaw in that prosperity stuff and even in my old belief that if I could generate this faith, I could then cause there to be these things. By believing I already had them, I would have them. But the point I was missing is, is that's a literal statement. If you believe that you already have it, you will have it. Because you do already have it. He's not asking you to believe something that doesn't make sense. Why would you believe some, that you have something? Why would you believe you have something when you don't have it? That's ir irrational. That's illogical. But it says in the Bible that he already gave us everything. We have been given all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. In Christ. That means through faith in him. We have all spiritual blessings. That's what they had. They had everything. So if I believe it, if I believe that he gave me that, I'm just believing that he did. That his word is true. And that's why the flaw because none of us believe that we have something we don't have and when we ask for it deep down I think most of us unless you have a really kind of a entitlement mentality that's just deep into like almost a disease you know you don't deserve it that's why you're asking for it and you're hoping that you could just generate enough faith to cause it to happen so no one prays for all these things believing they already have them because even the good things you don't even know that this is the right time and that that person should have that good thing right now or if they even want it because I could pray for salvation for someone and that's a good thing I don't think anyone would argue with that but if they are already being offered it by their father and they are rejecting it what is my prayer going to be? I think, and I know this is radical because it's going to change your prayer life if you accept such a concept, 
and you've been praying with the idea that prayer is about getting stuff. It's getting things, even if it's really good things that have nothing to do with yourself, but other people. To accept that is kind of scary. That you, what, I can't ask for things anymore? Well, he says that he already knows what you need before you ask for it. So it doesn't, it wasn't that he was saying don't ask for it. So I'm not knocking ask for it, asking for it. I'm just saying pray believing. If he says pray believing you already have it, well, what do you already have? You already have the same thing everyone has. And that's the love and acceptance of your father. And that's the only thing that's going to last forever. Even if you pray a physical healing on someone who is dying or very sick, they are going to die. <laughs> so it's only going to be temporary. And I'm not saying don't pray for it. It's wonderful to pray for it. And sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Only he knows when it's good. But he was going to do that anyway. He didn't need you to pray for it. So again, I'm not saying don't pray for it. I'm just saying don't feel like a failure if it doesn't happen because I forgot to pray or I didn't pray enough or I didn't ask my friends to pray. God knows. He's going to do the right thing. He doesn't need you to tell him what to do. But if you pray believing that you already have the only eternal thing, the only thing that's going to last forever, that you have the love and acceptance of your creator, that he made you, and he's going to keep you forever, you are doing the best thing anyone can do because that's going to come out of you. Because if anyone asks you about your God, you're only going to be able to tell them who their God is. Their God is this perfect God who created them and loves them, not in spite of anything, but because he is good, he loves and accepts them. And all he wants is for them to know that so that that perfect love and acceptance can start to do a work in them such that they would be transformed and changed once they see that they can pray and believe that they already have that gift that only he can give. In Jesus' name.